Check. One, two, three. The D. Three. Three. Yeah. This is the D. Three. Go. Your guide to Detroit. Your guide to Detroit's arts and entertainment scene. This is the D. Three. Here we are, episode number one. Numero uno. It's been a long time coming, hasn't it, Mike? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, I am your co-host of The Debrief. My name is Seth Ressler. And I am Mike Jeter. And here's what this is all about. This is a brand new podcast. We started this to celebrate all everything that's going on in the arts and entertainment scene in the city of Detroit. Boy, there's a lot. There's a lot going on. I mean, as we've been, we've been in the lab. We've been working on this for weeks, trying to pull this all together, figuring out everything that's going on in terms of, you know, not just sports and concerts and, and stage shows and just it's unbelievable everything that's going on right man tinkering with things uh delving into websites and going to buildings and restaurants and shows and venues it's been a a a journey that i think the people are gonna love they're gonna love this yeah so we're we're really excited we hope you that uh, you're gonna like this podcast a little bit about ourselves uh i am the new guy in detroit i've only been here for about two years i'm i'm i will admit i'm out in the suburbs you're a toddler I am, yeah, and I'm I'm learning my way, but I'm spending every weekend and a lot of nights and evenings over in the city of Detroit. But you're from the area, right? I am. I'm from Pontiac, uh, born and raised. That's my hometown. Love it to death. I'm glad that I'm back here. I moved away for a little bit, but I came back. And so. in the time that uh, we've been doing this, like I've actually learned a lot about this city from you. Uh, I, and I've learned a lot by watching you <laughs> stumble through you everything. Stumble and through everything. Like, oh. it's like, nope, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, here on our first episode, uh, we're very excited. We have uh, a guest, a, a comedian that you've known for years. Known this guy for at least five years. Very funny individual. Love him. Love him. Zach Martina. He is headlining for the very first time at Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle over in Royal Oak. Uh, so we're excited to talk to him. We're also going to talk to one of the owners of uh, Erebus, which is the big haunted house in your hometown in Pontiac, which I, I just assume that you've been to multiple times. Well, most houses in uh, Pontiac are, are haunted. So. <laughs> yes. But if you've been to this one. No, I will not. Uh, you won't go in. I will not go in. Yeah, yeah, wuss. <laughs> uh, and also, we're going to talk to uh, uh, w- one of the people uh, over at the DIA who was behind the Dia de Muertos uh, exhibit that's over there. I went and saw that over the weekend, and it's absolutely it's it's amazing, because uh, it's just so colorful and, and fantastic. And of course, we're going to be talking about concerts, comedy, movies, plays, everything that's going on in the city of Detroit, because that's what this is all about. All kinds of stuff going on here, man. I, I should point out that originally, we were going to do this podcast about Seattle, and then Dan Gilbert put together a little video and convinced us to, to do it about Detroit. Yeah, because so. you can't talk for an hour about coffee. <laughs> no, you can't. In the Seahawks. No, no, there's just a lot more going on here. Yeah. So, did you hear that uh, Amazon has gotten 238 proposals? Yeah, I heard. Uh, their headquarters. Yeah, yeah. And they're going to bring it here. They're going to bring it here. They're going to bring it here. They're going to listen to this podcast. And they're going to be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be the, the uh, deciding factor on all of that. Yeah, that's, this is the place to be. Like, yeah, uh, we can't pimp <laughs> out any more stuff, but we're going to decide it based on this podcast. Uh, summer's over. It was a beautiful weekend, but it's going to be cloudy and rainy and uh, just be fall, I guess, starting this week. Uh, so we'll tell you everything that's going on. Plus, we do got to give a shout out to the folks over at Podcast Detroit. Yes, those are my people. Uh, thank you for supporting us, sponsoring us. This is a, a huge deal. It means a lot to us. Yeah, Dave and the crew over there, you know, like we said, we've been working on this podcast for weeks, uh, just practicing, getting all the kinks out. We've gotten two of them out. We've got another 300 to go, <laughs> but, but they've been very supportive over there. And, and look, this, they're putting out great podcasts over there. So if you like podcasts and you live in the Detroit area, check out the, uh, the Podcast Detroit uh, slate of podcasts out there. And, of course, you can go to our website thedebriefdetroit.com uh, while you're there you can subscribe to the show it's in Apple Podcasts and it's in uh, Google Play Music and Stitcher and uh, everywhere else you might find it all the cool kids are doing it yeah hey and leave a review right because we're just getting this up and off the ground so it, it helps other people find the show if while you're there you can say nice things about Mike <laughs> it, it boosts his self esteem <laughs> I'm so sad. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm happy. It's our first show, man. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, let's do it. This is the D D D D concert calendar. And for our very first episode, there's wow, there's a lot of shows coming to town. So, uh, Holy cow. yeah, we've got uh, uh, the, the 25th. What is that? That's a uh, Wednesday. Yes. Uh, we've got Wolf Parade going to be at the Crowfoot Ballroom on Thursday, the 26th. We've got Dallas Smith with special guest Lena, uh, excuse me, Lauren Elena. It's going to be at Caesars Windsor. Uh, we've got the In Transit Detroit Relief and Recovery Effort. This is for Puerto Rico, and that's happening at the Garden Theater. I'm excited about the old school hip hop. Like, should I start beatboxing or? Yeah. Is this a- 
here's, here's how old. I'm old enough to remember that when the difference between old school and new school was Run DMC. When Run DMC started new school hip hop. Man, I, I wear shell toed Adidas because of Run DMC <laughs> to this day. I won't wear anything else. Shell toes. That's what you'll see me in. Well, some old school uh, hip hop artists, Dougie Fresh, the Sugar Hill Gang, uh, and Furious Five's Melly Mel are going to be at Scorpio. Uh, uh, oh, and Scorpio are going to be at the Soundboard. So uh, that's great happening. venue to watch it too. Yeah, I like that room. That's a cool room. Uh, Day Six Live, which is K-pop, that's coming to the Music Hall. What is that? What is K-pop? What is K-pop? You don't, you don't re- seriously? Is that like Kevin Federline, no. new rap group or pop band or something? It, it's it's like Korean boy bands and and girl. It's like it's like uh, it's like NSYNC if they Come were again? all Korean. Is like in, is. like a Korean in sync. Yeah, it's like that kind of stuff. Like Justin Bieber, if he were Korean. North or South Korean? I, I probably South. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm just <laughs> gonna, I'm gonna go out on a limb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got Ben Folds. He's gonna be at the Fillmore. Uh, that he's great, by the way. If you've never seen him, uh, he's absolutely fantastic. The Eagles are gonna be at Little Caesars, uh, and uh, uh, this is for the fifth year. We've got the Creepy Cheapy. It's happening at the Crowfoot Ballroom. Do you know about this show? No, not at all. So this is a bunch of local bands that get together and they dress up as other, you know, big bands, uh, and they all perform. Uh, and actually, we got a chance to talk to uh, Travis Kajeski. Uh, he's the production director over at the Crowfoot, and we talked to him a little bit about the history of the show. Here's what he said: Someone would be dressed up and play as Skrillex. Uh, the other person, you know, for the bands would be more so if it was like Van Halen or you know people playing as. Uh, 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 you know Led Zeppelin or any of those bands, uh, Rage Against Machine, and then they w- this year they're doing uh, comedians as well. So they're actually going to have it where one person's playing Aziz Sansari or you know uh, um, uh, Pat Oswalt. I think that's cool. Wow. This year, so this Very is the first cool. year they're having people dress up as who? What comic would you go as if you were to dress up as a comic? Oh boy, um, probably Earthquake. All right. Yeah, I would have to because as a black comic, we have to be a. Uh, uh, either named after a food or some kind of weather event. So if it's not, you know, ice, you know, cream or snow cone or something like that, I, I would probably be earthquake. All right. Uh, we've got <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm going to go as you. Can I? <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. Just empty all your money on the floor or give it to some woman and then you'll be me. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, Saturday night, the 28th, we've got The weekend. It's going to be at the Magic Stick. Uh, also, there's Monsters Ball at the Fillmore. Uh, Janet Jackson is coming Sunday night to nice. Little Caesars. Little Caesars. I've been in love with Janet since she was, uh, well, a long time. Yeah, me, long... it was Penny. When yes, she was Penny yes, on, on Good Times. On Good Times. Yeah, I think I was more Different Strokes was more, uh, you know, my Janet Jackson love affair. Yeah, that's when her baby hair grew out. This is called the uh, State of the World Tour. That's like a single off Rhythm Nation. That's a... Uh, I, does she even have a new album out? I'm not sure. I think I'm she not just, sure. This seems like an "I Need Money" kind of tour. Maybe. Well, I know she, she had a breakup and all that. Yeah. So maybe uh, it's to Janet, call me. Buy her furniture back or something. <laughs> Next week we've got T Grizzly. He's going to be at the Fillmore uh, on the 30th. Also, Courtney Barnett and Kurt Vile going to be at the Royal Oak Music Theater. And uh, Halloween. That's the uh, the big day that's coming up on Tuesday. Uh, look at this. You've got Hollow Wicked. That's Insane Clown Posse, Vanilla Ice, Esham. Uh, all going to be at the Russell Industrial Center. That is bananas. That's that is. a bananas concert, it's, man. It's like all the, is it just me or have all the white rappers come out of the woodwork lately? I think that uh, now they're back in play. Yeah, all yeah. the Kid Rocks and the M&Ms and like just everybody's getting another turn yeah, in the man. limelight. Yeah. So, uh, and finally on Halloween, 98.7 Amp Radio's got their Boo Bash with Afrojack, Flosterdamus, wow. uh, and Jonas Blue. That's happening. That's a wild lineup as well. Yeah, that is. That's happening over at the Fillmore. We'll talk about the stand-up comedy shows that are coming in just a minute. Can't get enough. This is the Deep Freak. Subscribe at Apple Podcasts or wherever you find your favorite shows. Mike, we got to talk about a holiday that I, being the, being the new guy here to the Detroit area, had never celebrated before. Well, being that I've been here for 48 years, I've never celebrated it either. Well, uh, you, you sound a little jaded. I hate it. <laughs> it's a sweetest day. <laughs> And this was my first sweetest day uh, here in the area where, I, where I've actually been dating somebody. Uh, and you kept warning me about this holiday and, and saying, but this is the greatest holiday ever. I don't know what you're talking about, man. Listen, man. It, sweetest day is like the father day of romantic holidays. 
you know. Is there something it, wrong with Father's Day? With I mean, yes, I'm not a father. Well, You're jaded about that too. Wait until you, wait until you have a kid, and then we'll talk about it. But no, Sweetest Day is the uh, it's uh, it's a manufactured Hallmark holiday. Yes, you know? but it's, it's manufactured for me. Like I didn't <laughs> I I didn't believe it. You you. You know, you were saying, oh, uh, because the whole concept here is the woman does everything for the man. And I didn't believe it. Like, I, I was like, this sounds too good to be true. So that, I bought a car. That's more recent history. And, that's not and what it's about. bottle line uh, as backup just in case because I was like, I'm going to get yelled at because I didn't do anything. Wait a minute. You had emergency gifts? I did just in case because <laughs> I didn't believe it. <laughs> man, listen. It, listen. It, it was started in Cleveland many, many moons ago. Uh, by a candy company because they wanted to show some love for the uh, the invalids and, and the poor people and the people that were homebound and they wanted to brighten their day up. They wanted to give them sweets and then it turned into this romantic holiday for some odd reason and now the gig is that it's for the men and not the women even though if you tell that to women you probably won't have a sweetest for sweetest day. So it's kind of a silly thing. It's confusing man. It's like Kwanzaa. I get it, but I don't get it. But I get it. <laughs> well, look, my girlfriend treated me right. I got taken out to Iridescence. Don't be bragging, I, 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 dude. I'm gonna brag a little bit. I got to Iridescence, the, the restaurant up in uh, Motor City Casino. Very nice. Which has got a beautiful view of of downtown. You know, and I I'd never seen it from that view. You can see where Tiger Stadium used to be over by Corktown. Uh, it's pretty amazing. And then uh, I went to this place called True North. Which is these? What is that? It's like these Quonset huts, is what they're called. Hold on, Quonset huts? No, not Quonset huts. <laughs> Quonset huts. See, it's, I told you I didn't get it. <laughs> it's basically like think of a rainbow if it were made out of corrugated metal. It's like <laughs> it's like this big, and they they plaster the inside and they turn it into these buildings, and and like people are doing yoga. It's a hippie commune, basically. People are doing yoga uh. inside. Some people are renting them out. We we Airbnb and we spent the night there, and it's right there uh, over a Grand River and Sixteenth. Wow. Which, um... That's an interesting place to have it. Yeah, it's not where I would put a hippie commune, but, you know, it worked. Listen, if they're... If they, if they like it, I love it. All right. Well, look, maybe I can, uh... Maybe I can have my girlfriend talk to yours about, uh, what to do for Sweetest Day next year, and we can hook you up a little I'll bit. I'll wait around for Juneteenth. <laughs> up next, we're going to talk about the, uh, Dia de Muertos exhibit that's happening over at the DIA. Welcome to the D. <laughs> Free, free, free. Funny stuff. All right, Mike, what's going on in the comedy clubs? Well, Seth, a lot of things are going on at the comedy clubs. On uh, Friday, October 27th, at the Casino Windsor, Sebastian Maniscalco will be there. Pretty well-known comedian. I've seen him. He's got a Netflix special. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Pretty recent, right? Yeah, very funny guy, man. Um, also, in Girls Point Farms at the War Memorial... Award-winning comedian and juggler Marcus Monroe will be there. Wait, I don't know what award he won. Yeah, did, did he win for the juggling or did he win for the comedian? I the think his act, this Andy Kaufman Award, is what he won. There's an Andy his, Kaufman Award? Yes, for uh, an artist that performs uh, the most original act. Really? Yes. I would I would want to go see Andy Very Kaufman original. Award winners. You know, to, to do comedy and juggle. Well, even if they were jugglers, I still think I'd want to go see an Andy Kaufman. Who gives that out? Um, There's an Andy Kaufman organization. I think it's yeah. Costco. Yeah, <laughs> or Sam's Club. One of those, one of those clubs like that, because that's very unique to be able to do all of that. Um, also, this weekend at Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle, uh, Zach Martina, who we'll have on later to interview, uh, he'll be there Thursday through Saturday. At the Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase, Sal D'Amelio, very funny local guy, uh, he'll be there Thursday through Saturday. At the Punchline in Southfield, Michigan, Punchline Comedy Lounge, Brian Hot Sauce Glover. He'll be there Thursday through Sunday. Four nights, people. And let's uh, point out, a lot of people, Pun- Punchline is a fairly new comedy club. It's only fairly been there new. for a few months. Um, so. It's been around for uh, almost a year now. Oh, has it been almost that long? All right. Yeah, so. a lot of uh, urban comics come through there. Very cool comedy club, but it's small. So if you're going to go, get your tickets and get in there early. Yeah, and parking is tough. And parking get is there tough. Early. So you need to get there. Uh, the Holly Hotel. Brad Tassel will be there Friday and Saturday evening. All right, dude. And one other thing we should point out is that you are a stand-up comedian. I am. And you've got something big going on this fall. Huge. You're you're going to be on one television. Per, one pro person said. Yes. One famous person yes. said. Yeah, I'll be I'll be on television uh, this fall. Um, not sure when the release date will be, but I'll be on the uh, 
Heart of the City show with Kevin Hart on Comedy Central. We recorded it back in early August with uh, three other local comedians, Jeff Horst, uh, Jay Bell, and Alton Boogie Williams. It was the most ridiculous thing I've ever done in my life outside of having my children. By law, I have to say that. Otherwise, I'll be cast as a bad dad. But it was the most ridiculous thing I've ever done in my life. And where did it all go down? Uh, it went down at the Jazz Cafe at the Music Hall. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, so packed out room. And what was it like? Completely you... packed out. Yeah. It was, uh, <laughs> it was out of body, man. I, I, I can remember walking through the crowd. Uh, as you come through the lobby, they had the lobby as the overrun room. So there are like 60 people out there. And down in the main room where we were, there are another 80. And Kevin Hart and the other two gentlemen on the show were on a, a, a riser. So from the stage, they're above the crowd, and the lights are on them. So you can see everything that they're doing as we're telling our jokes. And we walked through the crowd to get to the stage, and it was electric. And the first laugh that I got, it scared me. It was so loud. Uh, I hope they didn't get my eyes bugging out because it was just a blast. It, it, I mean, from the audience, it was ridiculous. Then from then on, after I saw Kevin Hart losing his mind over a couple of my jokes, I was like, okay, nice. this is cool. And it was That's got to be sailing. a good feeling to it see was, somebody like... It was incredible. Yeah. I would say better than having kids, but again, by law, I can't say that. And did you actually get to meet the man? I met him. Uh, he interviewed us for the uh, program and uh, earlier in the day, and then after the show, we took pictures with him, and he shouted us out, All told right. people to show us some love and they've been showing us love all right well i know we don't have an air date yet but keep us posted no will i most certainly will my friend all right up next we're going to talk about the movies coming out this weekend this is the d this is the d all right over the weekend uh you know after my big sweetest day night i actually got an opportunity to head over to the dia and check out this uh, exhibit that's over there it's the uh, ofrendas dia de muertos uh, exhibit and it's it's really cool uh, you know what dia uh, what what dia de muertos is all about um is that hot dog with mustard no <laughs> no, oh, it's Coney Dog, right? Right, it's Coney Dog. Yeah, no, it has nothing to do with Dia Coney means dogs. day. Dia means day. So day of the mustard? Yeah, no. <laughs> Second grade Spanish, man. We didn't get that far. Yeah, I guess not. Uh, no, it's 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 Day of the Dead. It's a big holiday that's celebrated by uh, you know people of Mexican descent and a lot of other people of uh, Hispanic descent. Uh, and so they do this big exhibit every year where they have people come in and build ofrendas, which oh. are basically altars. Uh, and I sat down with the uh, family uh, program coordinator over there. Her name is Emily Boyer, uh, and I had her explain to me a little bit about what the it's Day all about. The Day of the Dead is a tradition. Um, it's mostly Mexican. But other Latin American and also Mexican American uh, communities celebrate it. It's um, to honor those who have passed, uh, and it's a very colorful, joyful tradition. So unlike um, you know Halloween, which is very dark, uh, Day of the Dead is is very very colorful, and you always see flowers and colorful ribbons, um, and it's just a way to uh, remember those who we have lost uh, and to re-enjoy their spirits and um, with the altars you usually build it for one specific person uh, and you put things on it that that person loves so you they had photographs of them and then also you know their favorite foods their favorite drinks you know if they had a favorite book you'd put that out there and it's supposed to um, invite that person back into your home I like that concept of yeah, man. inviting somebody back into your home that's been gone. I mean, you lost a loved one this year. Yeah, man. Um, my mother passed away back in July. And um, uh, I mean, she was our foundation. She was our spiritual leader. She's the foundation of my family. I'm one of 17 kids. And um, my mother gave birth to 14. And I have two half sisters, half sisters and a half brother. And um, she she was just a strong woman, man. That That's... That's my lady, man. And uh, we lost her, and it, it, it was obviously, I'm still affected by it. So, let me ask if you were uh, putting together an ofrenda, if you were putting together an altar, her stuff oh, to boy. bring her back into, into the home, what would you put up there? Um, oh, boy. Um, well, a picture of, of her kids because we were, you know. I mean, we're the obviously the focus of it her. It sounds like that would take up most of the. Ofrenda. Yeah, that would take up a, a whole ofrenda. <laughs> right. That'd be like two friendas. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, her sweet potato pie, man. I mean, her. She was a huge, huge singer. Her voice is beautiful. Um, she was compared a lot to Mahalia Jackson. Yeah. Um, she cha- she sang um, uh, 
religious music, Christian music. And um, so I would have at least something with Mahalia Jackson up there. You know, it's funny you mention that because one of the ofrendas when I went through and saw it uh, has a whole bunch of uh, jazz artists and records and things like that. Oh, and nice. and you know they got the little uh, I don't know if it's paper mache or what they make it out of, but the little skeletons and one of them's playing a piano there. Uh, wow. And actually, I Emily told me the story behind that uh, ofrenda. Uh, and I thought it was really cool, so here it is. The artist's name is Jerry Sad Ruddy, uh, and it's called A Song for My Father. And her father grew up here in Detroit and spent a lot of times, a lot of time in the various jazz venues. Uh, he was a musician, I believe. Um, and so the ofrenda is both a tribute to her father, but also a tribute to the the jazz venues that are no longer here. Um, so you'll see all sorts of uh, images of her father and things for her father, but also uh, images of the Paradise Theater, the Greystone Ballroom, and then there's um, images of Billie Holiday, you know, um, artists who who her father remembered seeing at these venues. Um, so it's very, very, has a very strong Detroit connection and a very strong personal connection. Yeah, I thought that was cool. Do you know these venues, or are these before your time? Even? Oh, before my time. Yeah, so, no, I thought that was cool. I had a, uh, a friend who passed away a couple years ago, because I was thinking about this, too, if I were to build one, who would it? And uh, this was a guy who was uh, a, a social scientist. He was embedded in Afghanistan with a unit there, mm. and they hit a roadside bomb, and he unfortunately oh, wow. passed away. But he was uh, he was like a guy's guy. Like He was one of those guys that would come over, we would drink scotch and play Halo and watch Entourage until 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, and talk about Talk about Sweden. Day. Well, <laughs> no, we talked about manly <laughs> things like that. Uh, uh, but no, and so I think that's what I think would be Halo and, and Scotch, uh, you know, bottle of Scotch and, and maybe Entourage on DVD that we put up on that ofrenda. I might try to build one. Yeah. Just a small version. Just, just a little yeah. one. Uh, they're not, uh, you know, most of them are, are towards people, but some of the ones that are on display there are uh, towards, you know, bigger uh, uh, concepts or ideas, and some of them are more somber than others. So uh, here is Emily talking about one of them uh, called. La, oh boy, I hope I get my Spanish right. Uh, La Mariposas Desaparecidas, uh, the ofrenda, which is, it, it's this, uh, this beautiful woman dressed, you know, skeleton, because they're all skeletons when they're up there, uh, dressed in like a black gown, and she's got all these butterflies. Uh, oh, covered, wow. Uh, like these monarch butterflies. So here's what that's all about. It is um, a, more, a much more somber piece than what you'll see throughout the rest of the exhibition. It's a figure, it's a skeletal figure of a woman with uh, butterflies and the butterflies are there because they have a short lifespan and it's reminiscent of the short lifespan of the many bodies of children of of little girls that have been found in an area called valley of death and more than 16,000 female bodies have been found um, and they have been tortured and raped and mutilated but Pilar quote is is really trying to say with this piece that we need to know about these girls um, and we need to remember them and uh, we need to do what we can to uh, have it not continue to happen as it is. So there's a lot going on with the, with these different ofrendas there. A lot uh, going on in the art. Sounds beautiful. You have pictures of those. I do. You can follow them. They're on our Instagram account. So if you just uh, go to Instagram and look up the D brief, uh, you can see pictures from a, from a lot of these. And the exhibit is running over at the DIA through November 12th. Uh, it's called Ofrendas, celebrating El Dia de Muertos. Uh, go check it out because it's it's really cool. Uh, coming up in just a few, we're going to talk to one of the owners of the Erebus Haunted House. I know you're excited. Ooh. Action. This is the deep brief. On the screen. Mike, what's going on in the movie theaters? Seth, a bunch of cool movies are coming out this weekend. Uh, a lot of scary movies. Uh, Jigsaw. Another Saw movie is coming out. Are you kidding me? This has got to be like movie number 84. Yeah, at least. At least. Uh, it's about Jigsaw. It's an origins movie. Because every movie series or... Or, uh, Needs a prequel. Yeah, they I mean, have you to gotta have go a back to the beginning. Yeah, like, why did he go crazy? Why is he bothering these people? I'll bet he had that game Mousetrap as a kid. Remember that? You'd build things yeah, and do all sorts of weird stuff. But again, I, dude, I'm just wondering like, this guy, hasn't anyone picked up on him coming to Lowe's and buying all of these jigsaws <laughs> and bolts and stuff? It's like, what the heck is this guy building? He must get a discount. Right, if he goes exactly. in, right? You know? What do you think he's building a ship or something? <laughs> Anyway, there's another Saw movie for you for Halloween. Uh, Suburbicon, 
starring Matt Damon. It's directed by George Clooney and the Coen brothers. Uh, it's getting uh, some poor reviews, but it has Matt Damon in it. I'll go check it out. That's disappointing. I like George Clooney. I like the Coen brothers. But uh, but again, man, together. Mm, mm. Not so good, huh? Like I said, I like fruitcake or fruits and cakes, but I don't like fruitcake. Uh, thank you for your service. It's a story about soldiers returning from Iraq, and it stars Miles Teller and Amy Schumer. Uh, that's getting a lot of rave reviews. Uh, the Work. It's a movie uh, that follows three prisoners outside of Folsom Prison as they uh, take part in a four-day therapy retreat for level four prisoners. Those are the most dangerous prisoners at Folsom, and that's got no 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. 100? 100. That's high. It's very high. I don't think you can get any higher than that on Rotten Tomatoes. I'd have to check, but I think you might be right. I mean, math's not my thing, but <laughs> you're probably I think 100 right. is pretty much it, brother. <laughs> All right, also showing this weekend at the Main Art Theater in Royal Oak, uh, The Florida Project. Uh, Loving Vincent, which is an excellent movie. I highly recommend people going you to see it. You saw this. What is this? Explain the style that this was done in, because I thought this was really cool. Well, each frame of the movie uh, was painted, painted to mimic uh, Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night and that that style. It's very cool. It's, it's you got to check it out. I, I, I like I'm not that. doing it any justice trying to describe it, All but right. you need to go check it out. I will go see that. And also at the Main Art, of course, for Halloween, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, that's a must see. Uh, at the Maple Theater in Bloomfield, you have Battle of the Sexes. That's the Billie Jean King and Bobby Riggs movie with Emma Stone and Steve Carell. Uh, Professor Martin and the Wonder Women. This is about the comic book writer, right? Yes, sir. About the gentleman, uh, Harvard professor. That created the Wonder Woman. It was a Harvard professor that created Wonder Woman. It was a Harvard professor. Yes, Ivy yeah. League people. That's how. That's what we do. Draw women. Draw women. <laughs> that we can't have. Uh, <laughs> a goodbye, Christopher Robin. That is a story about the origin of Winnie the Pooh. Another origins movie. Uh, yeah, but all right, which origins movie are you going to see? You're going to go see the origins movie about Jigsaw or Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. I want to see them have like a crossover between the two. Like, I think that'd be cool. Like Jason versus Freddy? Yeah. <laughs> that could be cool. Jigsaw versus Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> and also at the Maple Theater, you have the Little Shop of Horrors, the director's cut. What? That should be pretty cool. What happened? Is it a different ending? Is uh, it? Yes. Yes. This one's with Samuel L. Jackson. They got rid of the Harrison Ford narration and the whole thing? <laughs> Probably, probably. <laughs> uh, at the Detroit Film Theater, at the DIA, you have uh, two very cool, three actually, horror movies. Uh, the 1932 restored version of The Old Dark House. That sounds interesting. And George A. Romero is one of my favorite uh, horror movie directors and writers. Uh, you have his 1968 classic, Night of the Living That's Dead. That's a good film. And the 1973 classic, The Crazies. I haven't seen The Crazies yet, but Night Must of the Living Dead. Must see, man. Yeah. They, they actually... Uh, did a remake of The Crazies uh, probably about eight years ago. Oh, really? Was it yeah. good? It wasn't as good as the original. What's, what's on your list of uh, top horror movies of all time? My favorite horror movie of all time is Halloween. Halloween. I, I remember watching it um, with my father and my mother, and I sat there on the couch, and I couldn't move for about an hour. Really? Even with the lights on, I couldn't. I was frozen. I was petrified. And they let you watch it? How old were you? Uh, three. No, come on. <laughs> That's how you have to raise them in Pontiac. You got to raise us tough. It's a tough town, man. No, I, I can't remember. How, I, mean, I was maybe 10 or 11. Okay. Yeah, but I was petrified, man. Uh, see, I like a lot of the Japanese horror, that J-horror stuff. I like the grudge. Yeah. I like the ring. I like the stuff that's not gory, but like creepy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm into that. So. Wow. Yeah, man. Ugh, all that stuff. Ugh. All right, coming up in a bit, we're going to talk about what's in the theaters, not the movie theaters. We're going to talk about what's on stage in the theaters. This is the Deep Breeze. All right, Mike, you're from Pontiac, right? That I am, Seth. You have a very, very famous, very uh, well-regarded haunted house there in your city. I think I live there. No, not... not, You have ghosts in your house? (sighs) No, I don't think black people deal with ghosts. Really? Is that a thing? You don't? don't. What? They don't haunt us. Have you ever seen a movie where black people were haunted by ghosts, except for Ghost Dad? And that was with Bill Cosby. Right. So, eh, come on. (laughs) <laughs> no, Come I guess I, I guess I have. Is that really a ghost? All right, then, fair enough. I yeah, haven't I think thought once about we that. die, we're just done. We're like yeah, we tap out. You're over, you know, like at the casino. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, there's a there's a haunted house uh, in Boniac. It's called Erebus. It's it's you know considered one of the best haunted houses in the country. It uh, was in the Goodness Book of World Records for a little while there. Oh wow! Yeah, and uh, it, it's been there since 2000. It's co-owned by two brothers. Their names are Ed and Jim Teribus. 
And uh, even before that, I guess there's there's what you call the haunt industry, right? So there's a, a whole like business built haunted around... Haunted hay rides and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, stuff like yards. that. You know, just trying to scare the crap out of people. Uh, and so there's a whole industry around all that. These guys have been involved for a long, long time. And I went down there because I know you were too chicken to do so. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> and, I, and I talked to Ed. I wanted to know a little bit about the haunted house. The coolest thing about this haunted house is that they've got what they call a wimp board. Hmm. This is for uh, this is for you. At the top ten spots. <laughs> yes. So I wanted to know. I asked a little bit about the wimp board. We have a wimp board. Our wimp board used to be a chalkboard. Yep, we got a wimp. We mark a little thing. Oh, we got a wetter. Mark it over here. Our chalkboard went to a digital board. We keep track of how many people have chickened out per year. And wimp, you know, we kind of wet themselves per year. And then we also have a running total. In fact, we just broke a thousand wetters. Uh, since our opening. Um, and we average probably anywhere from 50 to 75 wetters per year. And those are, there's a confirmed by management. When I say confirmed, I mean, you just kind of shine a flashlight, you see a big wet spot in their jeans. Um, and then the wimps, yeah, the wimps, we average, God, four or 500 a year. A thousand wetters seems like a lot of wetters. A thousand wetters sounds like a horrible dream. Would you want that to be your job? <laughs> like, you, you are on a wetter, you got to confirm all the wetters. <laughs> like, one wetter. Two, a, like the count from Sesame Street. One wetter. Two wetter. So one of the things they have in this haunted house is a bottomless pit. And Ed actually the told baby me. Baby wipes? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Different kind of bottom. <laughs> and uh, Ed actually told me the story of how they created the bottomless pit. Here it is. One day at the haunted house, it rained. It rained so bad, nobody came. And we sat there all night long going, man. You know, we got to pay all the employees, all the actors, everybody else. And at the end of the night, I'm like, just, just shut it down. Let's get out of here. And my brother Jake goes, Ed, look at this, look at this. And here's this huge puddle, 20 foot round. And it was half on this side of the trailer and half under the trailers. But our skirts went all the way down. And that ref- the water reflected the side of the trailer. It looked like there was a 20 foot hole in the parking lot next to the trailers. Went, oh, man, look at that, look at that. It looked so cool, and we laughed like little kids just giggling about this hole and thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. And obviously you go, okay, how do you recreate that? You create that, easy, put a mirror in the ground, right? Boom, you got a reflection, which gave you a 20, 30-foot drop, and you got a bottomless pit. See, it's not that scary. It's just a mirror on the ground. (sighs) That guy's way too excited about wet stuff. Wet pants, (laughs) bottomless pits. Come on, man. I think it's cool that he's just so excited about scaring it people. It is cool. It is you know? cool. <laughs> so, you know, one of the things he told me is that, because uh, I guess they have these conventions that you can go to every year, all the people who own these haunted houses, and you can sort of pick out the exhibits. And he said, we got to the point where we couldn't do that because, you know, then everybody else would have the same exhibits that, that we had. So we they have to figure out how to invent stuff, right? Uh, and, and a lot of it's original. A lot of it's stuff that you can only find here at Erebus. Uh, and one of the exhibits he told me about inside, you know, one of the, the attractions in the haunted house is called Buried Alive. Here's what he said about that. We thought about Buried Alive for six years. Put somebody in the room, slam the door, filled up six feet six, Buried Alive. How long can you hold your breath? The problem with that one is throughput. I can only get so many people through there. It takes you 42 seconds to do that. That's too long for what we need to do. So we had to build three of them. So we actually had three Buried Alives in a haunted house to allow everybody to go through. But now I have a problem. It's so effective it's freaking too many people out. People are stop. People won't come because I have that. So we're right now building a bypass to give people an option. Do you want to be buried alive or not? You'd take the bypass, wouldn't you? Man, I wouldn't go in. That's my bypass. <laughs> I'll take you wouldn't whatever, buy a pass. I'll take whatever it costs to go in there and go down the street and get some McDonald's or something. I'm not messing with that. Uh, well, thanks, Dad, for talking to me. Uh, if you want to check it out, go to hauntedpontiac.com. This is the Deep Breathe. On stage. There's a lot going on uh, when it comes to theater in this city. Uh, a lot of cool stuff. Starting, Mike, with the Evil Dead, the musical. Ah, uh, yes. That's happening over at City Theater. Uh, this is the, the last weekend that that's there. I went and saw this. What'd You've you seen think? it, too. Yeah, what'd you think? Oh, dude, it was an experience. I, I was really into it. And, uh, you know, the line, first of all, is around the block. And I wasn't sure what to expect. I love the films. I love the, the Sam Raimi, Bruce Campbell movies. I didn't realize until recently that he's actually, he's from the area. 
Yeah, Royal Oak. So I didn't know that there was a hometown connection, but uh, I wanted to see it because I love Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, Army of Darkness. And they sell these shirts in the lobby. They're like white shirts that say Evil Dead on it. Uh, And the first eight rows are what they call the splatter rows. Oh, nice. Because you're going to get covered in blood right, shooting right. from the stage. And people wear the white shirts because it's it's like a like a way of bragging. It's like a badge of honor to go out there and get soaked in blood and come back multiple times and keep getting your white shirt soaked in red blood. Yeah, man, my mother would not be happy with that. No, she would not be not happy. At all. <laughs> it would be tough to get those stains out. <laughs> there was one point where the actress on stage is sitting there like, uh, you remember the old White Snake video with Tony Katane? Oh, yeah. Katane, oh, you yeah. Know? And she's just like, you know, some blood. <laughs> <laughs> Blood spurting everywhere, and she's just whipping her hair around, you know, like a supermodel. It was a, uh, it was amusing, and a lot of my favorite lines are in there, like uh, "shop smart, shop S smart." Yes. <laughs> uh, also at the D- Detroit Public Theater, you've got Skeleton Crew. Over at the Ringwald Theater, which is in Ferndale, you've got the Rocky Horror Show. Uh, the Michigan Opera has ballet, uh, excuse me, ballet Hispanico. Uh, that's going on Saturday and Sunday. There is a Deaf Arts Festival presenting the Masquerade Gala. That's happening Saturday in Wyandotte. Uh, the Down River Actors Guild has Sister Act. There's uh, Shakespeare's A Midsummer's Night's Dream. Uh, that's happening at the Studio Theater uh, at the Hillbury and Wayne. State and the Scarab Club has uh, opera. Oh, so the Scarab Club and Opera Moto present Turn of the Screw. Uh, and finally, Mike, uh, I know you're excited about this. It's not till February, but the Dirty Show is coming back. You've been before, right? Why would you think I would be excited about it? I that? know you've been before. Huh? You just... I, I have been before. <laughs> See, and it, right? was, uh, it was quite the experience, ladies and gentlemen. Well, even though it's not until February, they have opened up their call for art. So if you have anything hanging in the basement oh. that uh, you're looking to get rid of, you know. I'll get all my saw art out. Yeah, there you go. Now is the time. I'm a jigsaw yeah, all art. Your, all your jigsaw, the, uh, <laughs> you know, the early years <laughs> <laughs> art is coming up. <laughs> the D. Breathe. It is, of course, the week before Halloween, so we got to talk about what's happening in this city uh, on Halloween. There's a lot going on. There's a ton. Are you celebrating? How do you celebrate? I celebrate Halloween by uh, putting out a bowl of candy, like three pieces, so yeah. people already think that everyone's gone through it. Oh, really? And then I'll just keep all the candy in the house and for it, me and, and eat. It's, all, it's just the, the terrible candy, so it's like three candy corns sitting yeah. at the bottom of the bowl, no chocolate. But it's an awesome November, December. Yeah, I'm sure it is. <laughs> Well, if you're looking for uh, something to do, there's a lot going on. Thursday the 26th, there is the third annual zombie parade. This is the uh, Wayne State Theater and Dance uh, troupe that does this, the crew over there. Uh, They all dress up like zombies and start wandering around Midtown. Listen, man, (laughs) if you've been in Midtown before, you don't have to dress like a zombie. No, it's just everybody with their phones. Everyone's pretty much walking like that down there. There's a lot of bars down there. You can just, uh, are we allowed to hop in our cars and start running over zombies in Midtown? Hijack a queue line. Yeah, or just a typical Thursday in Detroit. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Friday the 27th, <laughs> we've got Halloween Havoc costume party. That's happening at Dime. That's the Detroit Institute of Music Education. That's a cool venue there. Awesome awesome venue. You've done a comedy show there, right? Uh, yes, sir. I have. And uh, yeah, man, I, I love the Dime. I love it. Uh, it's just nothing but music and cool it's just a cool spot to hang. Uh, Saturday, the 28th, we've got the Halloween Spooktacular that's happening at the Yankee Air Museum. You can get in free from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, on Sunday, uh, October 29th, from noon to 3, we've got Treats in the Streets put on by the Detroit Historical Society. Uh, kids under 12 are uh, in- encouraged to come out to this and, and invited, uh, and it is free. And then finally, all weekend long, uh, Halloween in Greenfield Village. I like Greenfield Village. It is the dopest spot, one of the dopest spots in southeastern Michigan. And I love this. I, you know, I haven't been there for Halloween yet, but I guess they have uh, over a thousand carved pumpkins. I love seeing that, where people do the really intricate artwork uh, carved into the pumpkins. So I'd go check that out. And of course, they've got costume characters and uh, all kinds of other stuff. So yeah, really excited about that. Uh, lots of great ways to celebrate Halloween. I got to figure out what exactly I'm going to do. Yeah, we should try to get them to do a uh, the debrief carved pumpkin. We should. You know, that logo, that because I mean, we got the whole Old English D in the logo there. That's, uh, you got to have some skills. You got to have the, the right knife, Mad right? skills. Yeah. Mad skills. So, coming up, we're going to talk to uh, comedian Zach Martina. He's headlining uh, Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle at the Royal Oak. This is the D. <laughs> the D. Brave. 
All right, we've got a very special guest, uh, our very first guest here, Mike, in studio with us today. Yeah, man. And yeah, Seth. This, My dude. This is a man you know well. We have Zach Martina. He's a stand-up comedian. He's got a brand new album called Skunk Man that uh, is now available on iTunes and uh, and everywhere online that you can get albums, right? And, yeah, you can get it. And you are headlining, for the very first time, Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle uh, over in Royal Oak. crown jewel of Michigan and Midwest comedy. Well, yes. Welcome. That's a big Thanks, deal, man. right? I'm excited about it. Yeah, that's a big deal, right? That's People a it's four conies. <laughs> four conies, good. So, so tell us about it. Tell, I mean, what does it mean to come in and and perform? At, I mean, is this your home club? This is my home club. Yeah, this is uh, this is where I started. Uh, I think it means a little something different to me, just because uh, I've been going there since I was seven years old. Twenty four years later, uh, taking the stage as. They put it today, open mic veteran, Zach Martina, <laughs> headlining the Comedy Castle. Uh, so no, I'm jacked up about it. My dad took me there when I was seven to see Dave Coulier. Uh, wow. I mean, Family-friendly shows. Yeah, that's dope. I, I can't take my girls to see my act. Right, no? You're, you're something should, to an aspire this to. This is not family-friendly? Well, I mean, I guess it depends on the family. I don't want them to hear what I'm saying about them. Oh, they really? They don't like me about that. So. What, what do you talk about in your comedy? I mean, how would you describe it's it? Being married, man. Being a, being a parental figure. And then uh, I've got kind of a weird family. So uh, how old are your kids? How long have you been married? How long have you been, been uh, married? Parent? It'll be uh, two years. My wife just surprised me with the uh, the honeymoon that's come too late. We're going to Cancun. So we've been married two years. We were together three before that. Wait, it's been two years you haven't gone on a honeymoon yet? Oh, we did a destination wedding. We've right. done it in Florida. Oh, okay. Which was great because anytime I started choking up, there was a guy in his thong behind the <laughs> altar. And he really... Uh, <laughs> Bill Bouchard officiated it, and I had to uh, interrupt him a couple times just by looking at this guy's sack. So, local <laughs> local bulge, comedy legend, Bill, B- Bill Bouchard. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Well, that was wow. who I learned stand-up comedy, because I took his class. Over I took his comedy. class as well. Me too. Yeah. Oh, we, we all have. Mm-hmm. Oh, does that mean he has to officiate all our weddings? Yeah, he's like the He'll godfather it. or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he have to go get the license just for yours? He sure did. He sure did. I mean, it's online, though. It's just a couple click of a button. I don't even think you have to answer any questions. Oh, really? You just, <laughs> just like, click a box. Like, yeah, okay, I'll do it. You just have to write a check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, spell efficient. And then, uh... <laughs> well, look, uh, tell me about that first time that you were doing comedy. I mean, tell me about being seven and going there and seeing... Oh, no, no. I was uh, I was not doing comedy. Oh, I was doing it uh, on, on the way home. Right, right. <laughs> uh, uh, no, it was cool, man. My, uh, my dad, he was... Uh, Always an unorthodox guy, and he was looking for weird ways to do stuff with the uh, kids, like appropriate weird ways. But uh, he took us to the a bunch of comedy castles. He knew Mark, I don't know somehow, and uh, I remember Dave Coulier. He was so funny. Uh, he was Uncle Joey, obviously from Full House. So getting over that and realizing he had his own point of view was uh, was something special. And uh, yeah, twenty four years later, jumped. Uh, well, I guess it would be twenty one years later. Yeah, jumped on the stage for the first time at the castle. Wow, he's a local legend too, because he's from here. He's from over. Uh, where, where is he from? Gross Point. I'm believe, not sure where he's from. I believe so. Yeah, I think so. But you, he, they used to have uh, lineups at the Holly Hotel. It was uh, Tim Allen headlining, Dave Coulier featuring, and then oh, Norm wow. Stoltz MC. Like they were just wow. Killer lineups back in the day. <laughs> he was just in town. Both of those guys were just in town. Yeah. Tim yeah. Allen was just here. In fact, I thought I saw him again because uh, Mark Ridley was posting yeah. on social media that I guess Jay Leno was in here and they were. Uh, what's Jay Leno's show? They did uh, Jay Leno's Garage. Yeah, so they did an episode of that. So. Which they filmed exclusively outside of his garage. <laughs> 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 He's got so many cars. Why are they calling it his garage? Mike, you take your kids to uh, see comedy shows? Uh, no, I do not because uh, my brand of comedy is uh, a little. Um, Risque. Yeah, a little racy, I guess. Uh, I, I guess, understand. you know. So. My kid is just naturally funny. You know, my kids are. My older kids are. But my youngest kid is just a hoot. All right. Yeah, man. Well, look, Zach, I, I, I know I want to hear this story because you were telling us a little bit before the show started that uh, you've actually done time. Like, you've been I mean, in jail. <laughs> I would so, say, say, hold on. All right. We're going to come back because I want to hear this story. I, wa- I want to hear what it's all about. That's coming up in just a bit. The deep breathe. The deep breathe. Sports report. <laughs> All right, Mike, what's going on with sports? Well, Seth, uh, our Detroit Pistons are playing the Timberwolves at the Hara. That's a hot and ready arena. You know he's trying to make this take off. Like, this is going to be a thing. Like, uh, everybody's going to start calling it. He doesn't want them to call it the Little Caesars. He wants them I to don't. call it the... I, yeah, I think, uh, I think you'd be better off to go with uh, the Pizza Pizza Arena. Pizza Pizza. I like Pizza that. Arena. <laughs> like Goes right that. off the tongue. Uh, That's pretty pepperoni good. Pepperoni Dome or something <laughs> like that. The pepperoni of the Midwest. <laughs> Uh, the Pistons then go on a West Coast swing where they'll be playing the uh, L.A. Clippers, uh, the Golden State Warriors on Sunday the next night, and then on Halloween they'll be playing the L.A. Lakers. That should be a good game. Uh, with the you have to wear costumes if you play on Halloween. Is that how it works? 
My kids call the jerseys costumes anyway, so oh, kind of so works thing. out. Yeah, <laughs> I'd go with like Teen Wolf, like when he had, you know, when he was playing on the basketball court. Oh, could you imagine how sopping wet that wolf would be by the end yeah, of that? Uh, <laughs> there's there's such large men running around. It's just so predictable movie, is all I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> 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 We've entered the world of film criticism. Right. Then on a Thursday, October 26th, uh, the Red Wings will be playing the Buffalo Sabers in Buffalo. Uh, the Florida Panthers. They'll be away at the Panthers, and they'll also be playing on Halloween, just like the Pistons, but they'll be playing the Phoenix Coyotes at the Hara. Uh, I got to ask you about the Hara, because I'm hearing that attendance is light. It's very light. It's very light. Uh, Poor quality teams, two teams that aren't, I mean, they don't have a good squad on either team, and uh, the ticket prices are way high. They have to pay for that thing. Right. Yeah, they got a lot of pizza. You made a lot of pizza. Zach, you made it out yet? Not yet, no. Uh, I'll try. I'll probably hit a Pistons game. I like the Pistons. I don't. I don't care for hockey. Okay. Which I know is you're not supposed to say that in Detroit. Ah, come find me. I'm at Zach Martin on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> probably buy some Pepsi and get some free tickets. Out yeah. Of uh, the Spartans basketball team they kick off their preseason against Fair State. That will be in East Lansing. Uh, then the U of M football team. Hopefully they can turn their crap around because they're looking pretty shoddy right now. On Saturday, on Saturday they'll be playing the Rutgers Scarlet Knights at home. And the MSU Spartans will be playing at Northwestern. Uh, let's see. And the Lions have a big game Sunday night. Yes. 8.30 against the Prime time, baby. Steelers. Televised, Prime right? Yeah. yeah, man. Channel NBC. 4. With Al Michaels and Chris Collinsworth and behind Chris the mics. Chris Collinsworth. <laughs> I, would, uh, I would be fine if he would just stop yeah, just... His doing his job. <laughs> just, just don't do your job anymore. He's the Barney fight of sports <laughs> announcers. Uh, and the World Series kicks off uh, tomorrow, Tuesday. Um, and we're going to shout it out because uh, it's the Houston Astros and the L.A. Dodgers, but our Ver- Justin Verlander pitches for the Astros. So we're hoping that he wins one uh, down in Houston because he couldn't win one here. Uh, that's my Tiger. That's my guy. And also the Tigers got a new manager, Ron Gardenhire, the old uh, Minnesota Twins coach. Nice. Was it uh, who used to play Curtis twenty eight? What was the number? Uh, Anderson. Curtis Anderson. Grandison. Verla- Curtis Grandison. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Verlander's just like him though. He's like yeah. he's always going to be a tiger, regardless. Right. Right. I don't know. My opinion shouldn't matter when I couldn't remember. No, the guy's it does because he's uh, my other tiger, Curtis Granderson, man. Grant, I heard still does a bunch for the city, right? That's my guy. All right. D. Brief. Want more? Text the word to Detroit <laughs> to the number four 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 nine nine nine. All right, we're here with Zach Martina, stand-up comedian from uh, right here in the Detroit area. That is right. Headlining the Comedy Castle, Mark yeah. Ridley's Comedy Castle in Royal, Royal Oak. Oak. For, the, uh, for the very first time, I, I'm still impressed. I still think Thanks, that's, man. Uh, you know. I, what's the Detroit comedy scene like right it's great. now? There's a lot. There's a lot of places to get up. I mean, it is certainly a blossoming scene. Uh, and then when you get on the road, you're getting you're getting up every day, and then averaging more than one time a day. So it's uh, Detroit's great. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to come up anywhere, and I'm happy to be here now. I love I love this scene. Has it changed over the years that you've been doing this? Well, just people leaving, yeah. Rooms shutting down and new rooms opening, but uh, everybody's putting out quality content. All right, or working toward that. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're we're trying. I mean, what what is your life like? I mean, what is it you're you're hitting? rooms every night of the week you're out uh, i'm usually off on monday because uh i get to spend some time with my wife and then i'll usually be off yeah that's probably it consistently getting up tuesday through uh saturday unless sunday's got a gig on i'm on the road mm-hmm. so. I, I do want to ask about this story because you did mention it uh before we before we started recording today's show mm-hmm. you were talking about how uh, you have actually been to jail tell me this story how, what did oh. you go to jail for you do not look <laughs> like a uh, he was Teen Wolf. I was yeah. He interrupted a basketball game. He does game. look like Teen Wolf, doesn't he? <laughs> I was a troubled 15-year-old running with the wrong crowd. No, I was, uh, I was 15. I was just about to turn 16. I remember the night before, uh, my buddies and I went to see the movie Hannibal, because that's what you did in high school. You, you went to the movies, or at least where I grew up. Movies and then Rams. Romantic were. comedy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so we went home, and uh, the next day we were kind of just hanging out. Uh, his parents were gone, so we were uh, having a good time. And knock on the door. It's a uh, it's a cable man. It's a Comcast guy, and I get it. A lot of people don't like anyone that works at Comcast. They give you nothing but headaches. So immediately you're uh, you're not thrilled with them up top. But you open the door. Cable guy's like, "Hey man, I'm just here on a service call." My buddy's like, "Okay." We go back to watching TV. We weren't even watching anything good. We were watching the ESPYS the next day, so it was a rerun. <laughs> I mean, we we're literally just killing time. Then all of a sudden, the feed goes. The guy cut the wire, and everybody loses their mind. I got these five giant friends, and they're all on the football team, and they're all 
all just jacked up, like big muscles, small brains, and they are running around the house looking to get his little brother's toy guns. Next thing I know, they're dressed up like cowboys and bandits outside in the front yard, prancing through the snow with orange tip shotguns and purple blink space guns. We're like, ah, <laughs> so funny. We go back in the house, about a half hour goes by, knock on the door again. We're like, oh, it's probably that guy asking if, uh, you know, were your parents or something. Open the door, and it is the police department with their guns drawn. Wait, oh, drawn? Yeah. Guns drawn. I guess the cable guy called his dispatch or whatever, and they called the police. He was in his van in the fetal position crying because my buddy, like, they were just outside running, screaming like, turn our cable back on. We pay our bills. We've got rights. And uh, he was in the backseat of his car because like, I guess he just saw someone dressed like a cowboy holding a little uh, toy hand- shotgun rifle, whatever. And uh, yeah, he thought he was going to die that day. Wow. What and town was this? It was, <laughs> it was in White Lake, Michigan. Oh, well. Don't, yeah. under, don't sleep on the suburbs, man. Don't sleep on the suburbs. They are, they are There's a whole lot of up. thugging going on. So wait, so what happened? But, but I mean, how does it go from, from that to you actually? So the cops, uh, they they demand all of the guns because the, the guns are still in the evidence room at that police department. Uh, they demand the guns. My buddy has had the bright idea of hiding them. And then they just conveniently forgot where they were and the cops took us and them in handcuffs two by two in cop cars to the holding cell where I spent I don't know four or five hours I mean it's not like some hardened story where I'm scared straight or anything it, it is white oh, lake so you, Michigan oh, so you're still yeah. roughing up cable yeah, guys I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah and uh, so yeah there were we got there and they they charged us with something and then we got to be part of some program that the school was putting on called team court where they could only <laughs> sentence you to community service and I remember my <laughs> team court. You would just pick up trash. And I got let off because I had convinced my buddies that my dad was the most terrifying man in the world. And he wasn't terrifying, but he was very creative with his punishments. Like, like, he, like he, what? Like Hannibal Lecter. Like my hair is really long and poofy because one time I wanted my brother to think I was going to electrocute him. So I pulled the battery out of a television remote control and I tossed it into the bathtub. And I was like, zzz, zzz. And I made him think uh, I was going to do that to him. <laughs> my dad didn't think that was funny, so he he brought that nine volt battery back and he made me lick it. And now my hair poofs out like this. It's like he's got uh, electroshock therapy <laughs> instead of grounding. So he was always very creative. He, he wanted you to uh, learn a lesson you'd remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's worse than anything my dad ever did to me. <laughs> <laughs> my dad was a fun guy. <laughs> All right, Zach Martina. The new album is called Skunk Man. Where, yeah. can, people, where can people get it? iTunes. Uh, it's on Apple Music. If you see me after a show, I've got download cards. Who listens to CDs anymore? You download it onto your your equipment. I don't have a CD player to put it in. I got to play it on my computer. I'll tell you what. On the road, old people are upset. Well, where's the CD? How do I work this? <laughs> I'd still have a flip phone. Well, then you need to talk to your grandson or something. And hey, I need a I need a smartphone. <laughs> um, okay, cool. And then you're headlining the uh, the big show this weekend at uh, the Royal Oak. Yeah, it's gonna uh, be me, Keith Bergman, uh, Lloyd Dig Johnson. Oh wow! Opening yeah. things up. It's gonna be a That's fun a lineup. Bill. It's gonna be a fun lineup. So, so. Mark been, Ridley's Comedy Castle. Yeah, go to ComedyCastle.com if you want all the details. And mm-hmm. how can people follow you on social media if they want to learn more about you? Just uh, search Zach Martina. It's uh, Zach Martina on Facebook, uh, at Zach Martina on Twitter, and then at Zach dot Martina on Instagram because a while ago I had at Zach Martina and then I was like no I'm going to brand myself as at Zach with a Z and then as you get further and further into comedy you realize how dumb that is yeah. and I couldn't get the name that I initially had back yeah. because they deactivated and will not verify that I am in fact that person are you Zach with a CK or CH CH because CK is tacky right fair enough I got hard opinions <laughs> email me it's true what he says I used to be chocolate bear so <laughs> Well, Zach, thanks, <laughs> thanks for stopping by. Have a great show this week. Thanks, man. Right? It'll be fun. Hope to see you guys. This is the Deep Detroit. This is the Deep Breathe. All right, Mike. That's it. That's uh, that's show number one, episode. Man, that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. We kind of ripped through that. We should come back and do this uh, more often, don't you think? At least once more. <laughs> At least, At once, least more. once more. Uh, well, look, I, I have been Seth Wrestler, you over there. Michael Jeter. And uh, I, we want to say thank you to our guest, Zach Martina. Absolutely. Go see him this guy. weekend. You have yeah. to. He's over at uh, the Comedy Castle in Royal Oak. Also, Ed Taribas, uh, of the one of the co-owners of the Erebus Haunted House. I have not been yet. I cannot wait to go. I'm Still not going. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. I'm going. Still not going. Uh, and Emily Boyer over at the... Uh, 
the DIA. Go see that exhibit. And actually, if you follow us, we're at the D Brief on Instagram. I went. I took a bunch of photos. I, I thought this exhibit was amazing. It was really cool. Go check it out. I want to th- say thank you to uh, Raina Cato and James Clawson, two people who make this show happen. Uh, also, John Gay as well, who's uh, joined us and, and been helping us out. Uh, thanks to everybody over at uh, Podcast Detroit. Big help. Love those guys. Yeah, we've been uh, we've been in the lab for many, many weeks working on this show, and uh, Dave and everybody over there was very, very helpful. You can find this show on iTunes. Uh, if you go there, you can subscribe and leave a review. That helps other people find the show. Also, you can follow us on social media. We are The Debrief Detroit on Facebook. We're at The Debrief on Twitter and The Debrief on Instagram. Uh, if you are listening and you are a venue uh, in the arts and entertainment space, whether it's food, whether it's drink, whether it's uh, you know your museum or your doing a fashion show, whatever it is you want to, to send us your uh, press announcements, you can email them to press at thedebriefdetroit.com. And of course, you can go over to the website, thedebriefdetroit.com, sign up for the email list. We will email you uh, what's going on each and every week. Uh, and you can text us. You can text the word Detroit to the number 444-999. And there's one other thing we're going to do as part of this show, Mike. What's that? So, well, well, so I'm the new guy. Uh, you know, I, I've been here for two years, but I, I do not know this city well. I certainly don't it's know. It's a lot to learn. It is a lot to learn. It's a lot to learn. So I need a crash course. So, Brother, every, I'm going to try to help you. Every episode, <laughs> what are we doing here? You're giving me homework. I'm going to give you homework. I'm going to send you out and about, or as the Canadians would say, a boot, to find some information about our fair city, our area, the Detroit metropolitan area. There's a lot of stuff going on. All right, so what's uh, what's the first assignment? What do I got to go learn about? Um, I need you to go out and learn about Hudson's, J.L. Hudson's. J.L. Hudson's, Hudson's A-U-D-S-O-N-S. Yes. yes. Find out what this means to the city of Detroit. Yes. Come back, give you a report. I want a full report. I wouldn't have done this podcast if I knew spaced, there was going to be homework involved. Single spaced and all that. You know what I mean. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll talk to you next time. The D-Brief. Your guide to Detroit's arts and entertainment scene.